Hello, hello, and welcome once again back to my lab. Today we will be making benzoic acid. Actually, I won't be making benzoic acid, I'll just be isolating benzoic acid, since making benzoic acid is kind of wasteful since it's so cheap. Um, benzoic acid is this structure right here. Actually, this is sodium benzoate. This is what I buy. It's the sodium salt of benzoic acid, the free acid, of course, having a hydroxyl group there instead. It's a it's the benzo carboxylic acid, as you can see. It's benzene uh, carboxylic acid, in fact, is the standard name, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, so I buy the uh, the sodium salt of benzoic acid, which is, is used as a food preservative, so it's very cheaply available online. It's used in fireworks, all sorts of things like that, so very readily available. Maybe not at the supermarket, but you can definitely buy it online, and uh, it's the easiest way to make benzoic acid. Some people oxidize toluene to make benzoic acid. Now this here is uh, it's toluene, it's methylbenzene, and uh, it's uh, susceptible to attack at the methyl group here, especially in oxidizing conditions. You can use something like potassium permanganate to oxidize this to benzoic acid, but that wastes permanganate and toluene, both of which are much more expensive than sodium benzoate. So how I do it is I take sodium benzoate like that. This is very soluble in water because this sodium can uh, associate with the water, causing it to dissociate from the acid, and it makes this whole system rather soluble in their little happy spheres of hydration. Uh, but then I can introduce, say, a... Uh, oops, I'm just gonna write two H's there for no reason. Uh, I'm going to introduce a strong acid, so like H plus Cl minus. So I just introduced uh, hydrochloric acid, very very well, it's not that strong of an acid, but it's a strong acid compared to benzoic acid. Although benzoic acid is quite strong uh, in comparison to other organic acids, um, hydrochloric acid is by far stronger. And so since this is competing for the water to form its little spheres of hydration, it actually steals the water from around this, uh, this entity here that's keeping it solvated. The proton jumps and you end up with benzoic acid here, which precipitates out of solution as a solid because you can see most of this is nonpolar, so it's got uh, a reasonably low solubility in water. So if we make a concentrated solution, this drops out, and then we end up with uh, sodium chloride uh, still in solution. So, uh, and of course, this we just filter out and we can uh, isolate our benzoic acid. It's a simple demonstration of the way, uh, the way in it the pH, the acidity of a solution can affect the solubility of its constituents. It's an interesting concept that I'll touch on in later videos. But anyway, let's get started since this is super easy and uh, we'll make up our solutions. So I've set up here the uh, very basic process. Uh, we need 100 milliliters of hot water. We need, uh, in this case, 60 grams of potassium benzoate. I'm actually using potassium benzoate since I happen to have more of it than the sodium benzoate. Uh, the reaction, in principle, is the same, it's just that the stoichiometry is slightly different. So, to compensate, you can use any benzoate that you want, really. So, uh, 60 grams of potassium benzoate, 100 milliliters of hot water, and then 70 milliliters of 25% hydrochloric acid, which corresponds to a 25% excess over uh, the benzoate salt uh, that's needed for the full conversion, of course, and that extra acid is going to help force more, but more benzoic acid out of solution. So, I'll put this on the hot plate with a stir bar. And uh, we'll get that stirring. And then we can add the hot water here. And we'll simply stir that until it's dissolved. I should note that the dissolution of potassium benzoate is highly endothermic, so this uh, this water goes from very warm to pretty much room temperature very rapidly, and uh, that of course affects the rate at which it dissolves. So you can heat this slightly to, uh, to get it all to dissolve more quickly, or you can simply wait. I've got time, so I'm just going to go upstairs and wait. Um, also, you're going to want to put about 200 milliliters of water in the freezer and this will be uh, used to wash the benzoic acid product after. You want to get it as cold as possible so you don't wash away any of the product. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while I'm waiting. The benzoic acid is now completely dissolved, as you can see by the clarity of the solution. I'm now going to add the hydrochloric acid to precipitate the benzoic acid. This should be fairly dramatic. There we go. Pump this around with a stick to kind of break it up. It's 
It's kind of got the consistency of cottage cheese. And don't worry, just keep stirring it, it will uh, it'll eventually you break the crystals enough that it will be liquid enough to pour. Continue to magnetic stir. As you can see here. Okay, so this uh, is a little warm. I'm going to let it cool out a little bit to uh, just about room temperature, and then uh, I'll go ahead and vacuum filter this to recover the benzoic acid. I've set it for vacuum filtration with a 250 milliliter uh, medium fritted funnel. I have the mixture here of benzoic acid and uh, hydrochloric acid and desiccant chloride and such. Um, and then I've got a 500 milliliter collection flask, which I'll probably need to empty more than once during this, and then the cold water to wash the benzoic acid with. So we can go ahead and pour this into the filter funnel. It's about as good as it needs to be. And I'll turn on the vacuum, and we will uh, get this thing filtered. There we go. Wash it with the uh, ice cold water. And you can see that the, uh, the flask is now full of a powdery white solid, which is the benzoic acid. And uh, so the flask got pretty full, but uh, now it's flowing, which is good. I'm going to leave this on a vacuum for a little bit to suck the last of the water out of it. And then, uh, Go ahead and dry that. With the vacuum filtration complete, I'll now empty the benzoic acid onto a standard drying pan, which is just the old uh, coffee filter on top of a folded paper towel trick. So we'll pull this off and we'll just empty it out. That's not going to work. It's crunchy, it feels almost like wet snow. Very, very interesting texture. And we'll just break up as many clumps as possible and spread this out as uh, evenly as possible. Allow the paper towel to suck the water out of it and then uh, we can change out the paper towel periodically to make sure that this dries nicely. Um, one thing I did, I think I forgot to mention is that uh, because we use HCl as the acid rather than sulfuric acid or something like that. Um, it gives us two benefits. One, potassium chloride is quite soluble in water, so we've washed most of it out of here, and uh, this is going to be substantially free of potassium chloride, assuming that we washed it correctly. Um, but also that any excess acid in the form of HCl will simply evaporate off at this step. So if you had sulfuric acid or something like that, um, at this point it would stay with the benzoic acid and, and be introduced as an impurity. Instead, we're just going to evaporate all the acid off, and uh, this should be fairly pure benzoic acid as soon as it's done drying. It's been a few hours and the benzoic acid is now mostly dry. It's a, you can see it's sort of starting to free flow a little bit, a little bit of chunks, but uh, so a little bit of water still, but mostly dry, dry enough for the next step, which is recrystallization. So to make sure that this is completely free of potassium chloride and uh, any uh, sodium benzoate and things like that, we're going to recrystallize it from water. A benzoic acid has a very large difference in solubility between its, between hot water and cold water, uh, dissolving uh, 56.3 grams at 100 Celsius, but only 1.7 grams per liter at zero Celsius. So we should be able to, to uh, recrystallize the benzoic acid and lose only four or five percent of it in the process. And uh, that four or five percent, since this stuff is so cheap, is uh, easily worth the, uh, the great purity that we'll get from that. So I have here just under a liter of water, um, a liter of boiling water, well, it's almost boiling anyway, we're going to dissolve the benzoic acid in that. Um, just under a liter, in fact, it is 
uh, 56.3 of a liter, which uh, corresponds to the exact amount we need to dissolve the theoretical yield of benzoic acid that we just made uh, into hot water. And I'll just get this boiling, make sure it all dissolves, and then we'll stick it in the freezer. So, get the stir bar going, and we'll drop in the benzoic acid. And with uh, heating and rapid agitation, we should be able to get all of that to dissolve in, over the course of a few minutes. Alright, well all the benzoic acid appears to have dissolved, except for this little crust on top, which just uh, forms no matter what you do when you have saturated solutions at high temperatures like this. So I can go ahead and uh, turn off the stirring, I'm going to use a magnet to retrieve my stir bar, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this cool down, turn this off. Let this cool down and uh, the benzoic acid should crystallize and then we can collect the newly purified benzoic acid. Well, it's been about 30 minutes and this is still uh, it's just uh, it's pretty warm actually. And you can see the crystals are indeed forming of pure benzoic acid and we'll be able to harvest those crystals later after this comes to a full cool. Uh, we're going to cool this of course up to room temperature and then this will be stuck in the refrigerator and then finally the freezer, and hopefully we can harvest the crystals at uh, zero Celsius, which will give us the maximum yield possible. All right, I just removed the benzoic acid solution from the freezer. You can see it's a little frosty on top. And it uh, looks like we've crystallized a lot of the benzoic acid. That looks really cool. And you can see in there some sort of forest of crystals. And uh, I've once again set it for vacuum filtration, and I'm gonna go ahead and run this through. Uh, since I have over a liter of material here, I'm probably going to have to fill up this flask and empty it out a few times, but uh, no big deal. Uh, let's get to it. we have some nice crystals of pure benzoic acid. Uh, chemistry sure does look cool sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to turn the vacuum on and uh, I'll let this suck the water out of it for a little longer, maybe five more minutes, and then uh, transfer it to the standard drying tray. Okay, and we're back to the old paper towel trick. The benzoic acid crystals, these should probably just dump out if I Good. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. Almost clean. Do a little bit of scraping maybe. I don't want to gouge my frit with this stainless steel spatula either. Yeah, you know, that's good enough. We got 99.9% .9 of it. And here is the mat of fine needle-like crystals. It looks almost like glass wool. Well, it's been about a day, and you can see the benzoic acid is pretty much completely dry. It's now a mass of free-flowing needle-like crystals that glitter in the light. It's really, really quite a cool-looking compound, at least in this form, anyway. So, the only thing left to do is to put it in an appropriately sized container and uh, label it for storage. I'll be using this in a number of upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. If you'd like to see that and be notified when I make those, please press the subscribe button. And if you like what you see, uh, press the like button as well. Also, feel free to leave me a comment, and I will try to answer as many comments as I possibly can. I try and do that maybe once every couple of weeks. And uh, as always, thank you very much for watching.